Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the resignation of the latest disgraced Tory MP, William Ragg, from pretty much everything. He resigned as vice chair of the 1922 committee, resigned from roles on parliamentary committees, which is more important for the public, and even voluntarily suspended the party whip. But that raises a huge question because Sunak and his cabinet backed Ragg throughout. So what does it say about Sunak's leadership and the perception of his leadership that he didn't withdraw the whip himself. Because this now looks terrible for Sunak. Labour are reported to have said that Sunak is so weak that Rag had to fire himself. Now, before I go over the implications of yesterday's news and how it raises more questions than answers, I do want to address one important point. So there are people who have expressed sympathy for Rag, and I don't mean tribal sympathy from the Tories, I mean from some anti-Tory commentators as well because they see that he's been a victim, he's been a target of a sting and he has struggled with mental health issues in the past and sure, obviously we don't want people going over the top in attacking him but I would also say that he's only a victim because he didn't take his job as an MP seriously. You know, I've already said earlier I had some sympathy with the position he found himself in after he behaved unwisely, you know, when faced with the blackmail, um, even though Rag himself won't call it blackmail. But those putting him under pressure, they didn't get compromising images. We're not talking about something he did that was perfectly legal in his youth, um, before he entered politics, and but as a politician, all of a sudden looks really bad. No, that's not. Rag supplied them with the compromising information. Like, as a teacher... There are some things I couldn't do in my personal life. There are some professions where you accept that there are certain liberties that other people enjoy and they're all fine, they're all legal, but you can't because it would reflect poorly. Um, you know, teachers, police officers. There are some civil servants that can't even be openly political. There are professions where you accept certain freedoms which most people enjoy are closed off to you in the interests of maintaining the integrity of that profession. The same should absolutely be true of MPs. MPs cannot be allowed to think they could just behave as an ordinary private citizen in all regards, especially when it's not just a case of maintaining the integrity of their profession or what's left of it after years of Tory sleaze, but because unlike a teacher or a police officer, MPs are obviously going to be targeted by organised criminals and foreign agents. So I'm afraid I don't consider Rag a victim as some are doing. It would have been different if he'd have, as I said, done something before his political career, which they'd got hold of, um, you know, and, and was now being used to compromise him. I'd have more sympathy then. That is not the case. But anyway, that's out of the way. There are bigger questions here. When I first discussed this last week, my focus was on him resigning his parliamentary committee positions. He's now done that, which is good. Someone who has compromised national security and the security of MPs should not be in receipt of confidential parliamentary papers. We know he's compromised. Don't show him things that the public wouldn't have access to. Frankly, I'm not sure that he should really even carry on being an MP. But at least the damage has been limited now. The first resignation I heard about was as vice chair of the 1922 committee, actually. Um, of less interest to the public, but I think still... Yes, good. Given that he had endangered fellow MPs, I can't imagine it would have been a good look for him to remain in a position where he may have been handling confidential matters where MPs are concerned, even if it's on purely internal party matters. Now, these resignations are all part of like a healthy system in theory. Anyway, it is normal for MPs to resign from these positions rather than be sacked. It's always better. Like, you know, if someone disgraces themselves, the leader would rather they resigned. You know, if it's like as a minister or a chair of a select committee, as William Ragg was, then yes, you resign rather than be sacked. It's a really bad luck to sack them. And, and actually taking several days to resign also might seem odd, but that's also normal. Because when the news, when news suddenly comes out like this, although some people have known about this for a long time, you know, the public didn't, so everyone has to take stock of the situation and it's better to spend a few days thinking about it than acting rashly. And he resigned from his various committee positions within a week. And Parliament was in recess anyway. 
So there was no issue with taking an extra few days. It's the whip that's the weird thing. He doesn't have the party whip anymore, but it was not Rishi Sunak who removed it. That is curious. At the time the news broke, there were calls for Sunak to remove the whip from RAG, and not actually from Labour on this occasion. Labour actually say, well, that's up to them. But, you know, there were general less party political calls. Admittedly, quite a lot from Johnson supporters who were not good faith actors in this episode, but others as well who were more genuine. No axe to grind. Sunak didn't do it. In fact, he and his cabinet colleagues robust, robustly backed Rack. Jeremy Hunt praised his bravery. You want me? Remember, this hasn't just happened. All this happened a very long time ago. It's just that it went public last week. But this supposedly brave man not only put himself in a compromising pos position, but compromised the security of fellow MPs to someone who could have easily been a foreign agent for all they know. The, anyone involved in this cover-up, and William Ragg definitely was involved in this cover-up, has actually been risking the security of MPs in general. Because here's the thing. As soon as someone alerted the whips to it, because some Tory MPs, remember, have alerted the authorities when they were targeted. Why wasn't it then made public? Because it needed to be made... You needed to tell other MPs, because other MPs could have been targeted separately. Not even just Tory MPs. There might have been Labour MPs being targeted. So why, as soon as someone said, oh, there's some scammers about here, why weren't all MPs being alerted to it? And of course, when all MPs are alerted to something, inevitably the public will find out as well. So anyone involved in this cover-up has knowingly and potentially been allowing a foreign agent to carry on trying to target MPs because they haven't been alerting people. Like if someone goes round your neighbourhood trying out some scams on elderly people. You report it to the police and the police try and alert the community, right? Watch out for this scam. Why weren't MPs doing that? No, they were covering it up and William Ragg was trying to cover his tracks. You know, he only made an apology once it was publicly exposed. If you'll pardon the expression. That was not bravery. But the point is that the Tory leadership rallied around Ragg, full support. They circled the wagons to protect him. And remember, this is what got Johnson ultimately fired. Like people go, oh, he was ambushed by cake. There was no cake. He didn't eat any cake. Had nothing to do with cake. But also, his removal as party leader had nothing to do with Partygate. The reason Tory MP, they let him get through Partygate. Oh, they didn't do anything about Partygate. The reason Tory MPs binned Johnson is because he kept doing this. He kept making MPs defend the indefensible. When, when Tory MPs were disgracing themselves, Johnson backed them and made everyone else back them as well. So then that reflected badly on the wider party, making it harder for those MPs to defend their own seats because they were tying themselves to the same sleaze. And it all came to a head with Chris Pincher, you know, another marvel of nominative determinism there. Um, Sonak's doing the same thing here. He's backing William Ragg when clearly the public would not back him. He could have withdrawn the whip temporarily while an investigation took place. That's normal, happens all the time in other parties as well. It's just cautionary and it's seen as cautionary. Sunak didn't even do that. He defended Rag as if there was nothing to even consider. Putting way more emphasis on the victim element than his compromising parliament element. And yet Rag has, as Labour put it, fired himself. So here's the question. Why? Why did Rag surrender the whip? Did he just think he was harming the party by remaining a Tory MP? Was he doing it for the benefit of his party? Is that why he announced, because he announced he was standing down anyway a long time ago. But was that because he knew this would come out at some point? Was he still trying to do the party a favour then? In which case, why didn't he say to Sunak, look, this is a really bad look, you need to take the whip off me? Because this now looks worse for the party. Because it's like Rag saying, look, I clearly shouldn't have the party whip, but the leadership has so little morality that they won't take it from me, so I'll have to do it myself. Or did other Tory MPs put him under pressure to surrender the whip? Were some of his colleagues worried about how yet another sleaze scandal was affecting their chances of re-election? And maybe a load of them lobbied him to fall on his sword for their benefit. Remember, this scandal's going to keep running because there's a police investigation underway. Yes, the focus of the police will be on the criminals behind the attacks, not the politicians. But it's bound to keep reminding the public that the Tories have known about this for a long time and have kept it under wraps. 
you know, the party has essentially covered this up. The latest example of the Tories prioritising their own needs over national security. Remember, Sweller Braverman, as Home Secretary, compromised national security, refused to even apologise, didn't won't even to this day say she did anything wrong. She was sacked by Liz Truss, but then taken on in the same role less than a week later by Rishi Sunak. Let's not forget the biggest threat to national security of all, the alleged Russian asset to Boris Johnson. He was allowed to become Prime Minister when Tory MPs suspected he was a Russian asset just to get them out of a hole. So Rag resigning was certainly doing his party a favour, but then it looks like Tory MPs are taking matters into their own hands because their leader is too weak to get involved. Now, obviously, I don't know what's been said in private. I don't know what compelled Rag to surrender the whip. What I do know is that the leadership backed him to the hilt. So as far as the public are concerned, the leadership, the party leadership, didn't think he needed to resign from anything. But he's done so, depriving the party leadership of not only any moral authority, but any authority at all. Because someone has clearly acted now um, to do something that the leadership should have done. Like party chair Richard Holden was trying to put a gloss on this. He said, oh, it was absolutely quite right for, for Rag to surrender the whip. Well, it's like, well, if the official party line is that Rag should not hold the party whip, why didn't Sunak take it from him? And now Steimer has a new line for PMQs next week. The Prime Minister is so weak that when his MPs disgrace themselves yet again, they have to arrange for their own dismissal. Sunak just cannot even get the basics of politics right, can he? But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.